Hi, my name is Chris Bailey and I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be talking about the basics of vector displacement. Let's get into it. Don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. We've got a ton of Blender content with professional Blender instructors ready to answer your questions. You can jump in and enroll today. OK, so today we're going to be talking about vector displacement. Now, it's a really complex, deep rabbit hole. Now, you might see uh, as November comes around, we've got November coming up and everyone's going to start posting up some amazing shaders that do some incredible stuff. Um, and basically, the idea is using a material and using color values to shape, bend and move and create geometry. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by clearing out my scene. I'm going to A to select all and X to delete. To make this really simple so we can visualize it, I'm just going to use a plane. So I'm going to go shift A, mesh plane. This is just a single polygon, nothing complex. I'm going to split my view and I'm going to take this view and turn it into my shader editor. And I'll just bring this over here. I'm going to click new to create a new material. And then I'm going to come over to the modifiers tab. Now, the first thing you need to do to get vector displacement to work is you're going to need to put a subdivision surface on your object. Now, usually people use a cube or a plane like this to start with. It's all you really need. Um, you can start with any mesh, but it's really simple if you just start with one of these. Um, now, we're going to take this modifier drop down and we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Now, there's an extra feature that we need to enable that's only available if you come up to the camera render tab here and we're going to switch to cycles and then once we switch to cycles we're going to click on from supported we're going to go experimental under the feature set now you'll see if you come back to your subdivision surface we've got this extra button here adaptive subdivision we'll turn that on you can see the options change we get dicing scale levels of viewport and basically what this is is the subdivision surface is going to be looking at our material and the information that we send to the displacement input on our material output and it'll use that to generate geometry as required. Now I want to keep my square shape so I'm just going to switch to simple. The only difference between this, these two is that one rounds everything and the other one just keeps the shape that you have. So simple will just keep that box shape. So now we've subdivided our uh, plane. Now we're going to go ahead and switch over into rendered view. So I'm going to turn that on. OK, so the next thing we're going to have to do is click on the material output node here and we're going to open up the pop out menu here and right here under displacement under surface. This is in the settings section, which you can find right down here under options. You might be on node when you first open it, but if you come down to options, click settings and we're going to switch this from bump only. We're going to say displacement is going to be displacement only or displacement and bump. You can use both. I'll just put on displacement and bump for now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a gradient texture. So go ahead and type in gradient texture. We'll put the gradient texture mode and let's take a look at this. I'm going to grab a color ramp as well so I can make it a little bit clearer with the contrast. And let's plug this into the emission and also plug it into the base color for now. Now you can see that what's going on is that we've got a gradient of black to white and that's traveling along the X direction. So X on this side, everything is zero, which is black. And over here, everything is white, which is the same as the number one, right? So think about colors in terms of their three numbers, red, green, and blue. This is zero, zero, zero on the red, green, and blue. And this is one, one, and one on the red, green, and blue. If I switch this from a linear gradient to a spherical gradient, you can see that what it's doing is it's creating this sphere. Picture a three dimensional sphere that's centered around this point right here. Let's go ahead and figure out a little bit about texture coordinates first, because they're really important when it comes to vector displacement. I'm going to go ahead and create a texture coordinate node. Now, what's going on? By default, Blender is using the generated texture coordinate, and it's doing this to figure out where to place this gradient on the material. It's got to generate some kind of coordinate for that texture. OK, I'll put this bit here. I'll put this bit over here. Great. Generate is following the mesh of the object and it just comes up with it. It's a really cool system for placing, especially procedural materials. So you'll notice if I plug generated in to the vector and eh, nothing will happen because it's already using it basically. But what's cool about that is now we can use the mapping node. So I can grab the mapping node and I can drop it here in between. Without this, the mapping node doesn't work. You see everything just goes away. So the mapping node needs to know what kind of vector we're using. So by plugging generated in, it's staying the same basically. Now I can move its location around. I can position this circle at different points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this at negative 0.5 and negative 0.5. So I've moved it right into the center of my, my plane. Now I'm going to decrease this gradient and crunch it down a bit to get this white circle. OK, so now we've got 0, 0, 0 for our red, green, and blue all around this uh, plane, except for in the center where we have 1, 1, and 1. 
as the gradient for the center. Now, let's plug this directly into displacement and see what happens. There we go. Now you can see we're getting this little bulge. It kind of curves up and it moves off to the side. It comes even more clear if I was to drag these in a bit closer, you can see it starts to get a bit of a hard cap and it's leaning off to the side. It's shearing off in this direction. Why is that? Well, let's look at how much it's shearing. You can see that it's actually moving up about one blender unit on the Z direction, and it's extruding about one unit on the X and one on the Y. So it's pushing it out. So if you think about that, that's one, one, and one in the X, Y, and Z direction. And that's because the color ramp is feeding out these red, green, and blue values, one, one, and one. And Blender automatically translates any set of three numbers into a vector. It can interpret it that way. So this red, green, and blue becomes the position of where we want to push this stuff. So think about it. We're pushing it in you know, one in each of those directions. So if we only want it to go straight up, we don't want to push it in the X. We don't want to push it in the Y. We just want to push it in the Z. You can come over here and you can change the color. So we can actually take the red, which represents the X. We can drag that down. And then the green, which represents the Y, put that to zero. Now we're not moving it on the X or the Y, and we're just moving it straight up on the blue. And you can see that translates to moving straight up on the Z. Now this is really cool. Now you get these little jagged edges, and that has to do with when you're really, really close, when you don't have much of interpolation. If you drag it out, you can see it gets a bit smoother. Um, but if you want to have an object that is pretty sheer up and down, like a cylinder shape that comes right out like that, what you can also do is come over to your tab and you can change the dicing scale down to something like 0.1 and that will clean it up a lot. But it is a bit more complex for your computer to process, so this will slow things down. I'm going to keep that at 1 for now. We've got this thing, but let's say we want it to go higher than 1, right? And if you go into the RGB, you can see, well, we can't go past 1. We're kind of stuck. Well, that's all right. You can actually enter any number into these. So I could set this to 5 and it's going to go way up high. So this is pretty cool. Now you see I can unplug my emission and my base color, and I've actually got geometry that's being extruded. I might switch this from linear to ease. That will make the interpolation a little bit softer between these. And I can drag these around. And how could we use this? What's a practical way? Well, really good practical demonstration of this is to come over here and let's grab a texture like a noise texture, right? So I'll type in noise, grab a noise texture. Now let's look at this noise texture. If I was to take this and the factor and let's take our blue color ramp and let's plug the factor into here and we can drag this out now to give ourselves lots of fall off. You can see we get this almost like mountain range system and that's just being driven by the noise. Now, if you were to plug your factor straight into displacement, and remember everything is going to actually behave in a very different way because it's looking at all of those values and pushing the geometry. But by plugging it into something like this, a color ramp that's just using the blue channel, we're able to control which way we want it to go. Another way to do this is actually to use the combine X, Y, Z node. So if I grab that node, I can actually take this factor now. And instead of plugging it into a color ramp that has a blue color only in it, I can come over here and just say, actually, I'm just gonna plug it into the Z because that's the only way I want it to move and drop it in here. And now I can have a different level of control. Now we're losing the, the pump, remember we're pushing it up to five with this but we can use vector math to actually increase these values. So I could come over here and I could, uh, let's see, go uh, vector math. And I'll drop this on this side because this is the vector output. See, it's purple. And I could say, all right, I want to multiply this. I'm going to go one, one. And for this one, I'll go five. And now we're getting a very similar effect. We're multiplying the Z by five. We can make it go up. Likewise, we could come over here and we could get rid of that. And this is a gray output, the factor. This means it's just a floating point number. It's not a vector. So I could come over here and grab a normal math node and drop this here and say, let's multiply this whole thing. And I could turn that up and that's going to give me a very similar result because now these values are more extreme. So these are all the different ways you can use to approach vector displacement. Now, what we've been looking at right now is mostly just been straight up normal displacement, which is where you just raise things up or lower them. You don't really move them around. And one of the powerful parts of vector displacement is that you can actually give things that have like overhang, for example, which is impossible when you're just doing a height map with zero and one values like this. So what do I mean by overhang? Well, a great example of overhang is a wave. So let's take this uh, and we're going to get rid of this noise texture system. And let's start fresh. I'm going to plug my gradient texture back into the displacement. 
Now I want to take it off spherical and I'm going to switch this to linear. So now we have the, the black uh, gradient once again. I'm going to grab a color ramp and I'll drop it here and I'll just reconnect all this stuff up. All right, now I'm going to drag this around a little bit and I'm going to create another black pip off to this side. And I'll switch this whole thing to ease. All right, so I've got this kind of curve object now. Now I'm going to move it in my scene. So I'm going to come back over to my mapping node and I'll move it right here. And you can see I've got this wave object. Now, if we looked at what we were doing before, let's go for a uh, combine X, Y, Z. And let's grab this on the Z and plug it into the vector displacement. So we're just going to be moving it up on the Z. So now we're giving this nice clean curve that just moves straight up in our scene. But now let's say we want to take the tip and start to have it kind of curl over the front. How would we do that? Well, let's take the same gradient texture, but let's make a new color ramp. Let's bring this down here and let's have a look at just this color ramp in the emission and in the base color. All right. So for this one, I'm going to make it a bit smaller. I'm going to sh shrink these bits up. I'm going to kind of create a mask basically. So I'm masking out which bit do I want to actually curve over the rest. So I'll get this little mask here. And now what I would say is, okay, I want to move this stuff forward on the X and maybe up a little bit on the Z. So I could take this combine X, Y, Z, I can duplicate it and I can plug this in the X value. And now I can grab a vector math node and I'll just use add. I'll just add these two together. And bingo, you can see we start to get a little bit of overhang. If I take this number and I pump it up, so let's say if you go to the HSV, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Vibrancy, I could change the vibrancy to like three, and that will change all of these guys together at the same time for me. Now I can use these values to adjust how this is all going to flow, but you can see I've got this nice curve now. Uh, let's say I want it to go up on the Z a little bit as well based on this. I could create another one of these, plug this into just the Z value, and I could come over here, add another vector math node and plug this in. Now it's going to push it way up. Let's say that's too much. I don't want to go up that much. So I could come here and I could grab a math node and I could drop it here. And I could say, all right, I'm going to multiply by 0.5. Might drag this down. A little bit more until it's about right. I could also take this vibrancy and drop it down here, kind of get it right. Likewise, over here, I could grab a math node and drop it in this one. And I could use this to increase the height of the wave overall. So now I've got this really cool curve shape and I can go back to the beginning and I can just move it now along the Y, or sorry, along the X. You can see it's just going to travel along in my object. Now what we can do is we could go in and add a bit of noise and displace this even further. So I'll grab a noise node and I'll just come right over here and I will grab the combine X, Y, Z. I'll plug the factor into the Z value and then I'll take another math vector math node. And I'll drop it here. Now remember, see I'm using vector math for this end where it's all the purple values. They need the three numbers. Whereas this in, I'm just using the single value because these are all just dealing with single values. You can tell that because of the gray node, so don't, don't get confused by that. Now I'll take this and I'm going to add this one into the system. You can see, bam, now we're getting this really nice watery kind of shape. I can increase my scale like that. And now I've got this kind of crest almost that's going white. So what I could do is I could say, great, now this is all looking good for my displacement. Now I just want to work on how do I want to shade this material. So uh, what I could do now is I could take this, I could duplicate this system up here, plug this in, and I'm going to put this into my base color and I'll go ahead and unplug the emission. And I could take my roughness right down so it's a bit like water, increase my specular. And now I can take this and decide where do I want that that foam to be. I could say it's right around here. And then the set of black, I could take this and I could pump it up to a nice, nice blue color. Grab this one. Just color pick that blue. Maybe throw a light in my scene. And now I've got this really cool wave system. And now you can see it's moving across on my scene and I can animate it using these texture coordinates.
I hope you really found this tutorial helpful and you really enjoyed the process of learning about vector displacement. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much you can do with this powerful system. I really hope you enjoy exploring it and learning more on your own. Thanks again for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.